Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Um, a couple of weeks ago we were sent this. It's a motorcycle smart screen by a company called Lampto. It's a model is an RC12. They've asked us to install it on a bike and give them our totally honest opinion of the quality, the build and the use. Well in this video I'm going to install it, I'm going to show you how to wire it up with it using a relay so it comes on with the ignition and it doesn't run con continuously, it might be helpful for something else as well, any other accessory you're going to put on your bike. We're going to test it, we're going to take it up for a test drive, I'm going to show you how to use the app that comes with it. We're going to really be totally honest and unbiased. Come along for the ride. We're Mark and V and this is our adventures. So this is a unit on the bike, and you can see, on an adventure bike it looks quite tidy, doesn't it? Don't think anything looks too bad there. I think um, it looks quite neat, and obviously it doesn't look factory, but I think you've got to agree that that looks a nice piece of kit. It's, it's quite easy to read when you're riding, the um, brackets are really quite well made and if you don't tighten up that breath that nut in there too tight it is adjustable as well so um all in all really really good i think i'm gonna try and pronounce this right it's lamto it's l-a-m-t-t-o lamto um, if i've got it wrong please let me know anyway this was sent to us um so i cannot this is a paid advertising. Yeah, is that the way to say it? This, this item was sent to us, so we didn't pay for it. But we will be giving it a totally truthful and unbiased review. The model is an RC12. It's a smart screen for your motorbike. Um, they asked me to go, when they contacted me, they asked me to have a look on their website and choose a product. They, had, um, they got various car screens that sit on top of your dash um, and I thought well probably there's going to be a lot of people doing that um, and I do have a Royal Enfield Himalayan sat just there. So I thought what better place than to use the adventure bar and install it there. So we're going to open up the box first of all and have a look at it. It's the RC12 Lamto. Now, before we go any further, there are a few things that they've asked me to tell you. This is the email. Um, they've asked me to review this product honestly. And if I think the, qu the quality of the products is okay, could I ask followers to contact them on Facebook? And I'll put the details down below and credit this channel, say you've seen the information on this channel, and they will randomly give people an RC12 at half price. Well, that's pretty good, isn't it? I also believe um, they are gonna send me a code. I haven't got it yet, and I will contact them again before this video goes live um, to give you a discount on the product as well if you order through our affiliate link. So we'll get that sorted out as well, and that will all be down in the description below. Anyway, let's get on with the review. So first of all, we're gonna open the box and have a look and exactly see what we've got in the box. So I'll just uh, cut the plastic away. So you, you're seeing it the first time like I'm seeing it. So I've not opened the box before to have a look. So my reaction is genuine. And I'm not gonna say anything's great if it's not. I'm gonna get it fitted to the bike and later on in the weekend, we're going away camping in the van. So I've decided I am gonna follow V. She's gonna drive a van and I'm gonna go on the bike. That's as long as I get the MLT, I've got an MLT due. So I'm gonna to have to get that sorted out. Um, I'm gonna follow her on the bike and we can use the, the sat nav, well, the sat nav and other features on this and just see how good it is. So, um, Christmas, isn't it? OK. 
Okay, so if I turn that that way, once we open it, you can see exactly as I see it. Now I believe you can see that as well as I can. So we have an optional accessory kit here, a micro card hardware kit for uh, parking monitor, extension cable for the rear camera, uh, card reader to view the footage, uh, car charger with USB port, suction cap. This is more car things, I would say, rather than bike things. Um, and there's tech support and installation videos. Well, maybe this one will be on there at some stage. Okay, so let's have a look. First thing is the screen. Obviously, it's going to be on a bike, so it's not going to be as big as a car. Well, that's the same. I've got. Um, there's my phone. That's an iPhone. You can see it's about the same size as an iPhone there. Apparently it's IP67, um, I'm just looking, yeah, IP67 waterproof. Um, so that's the, the main unit. I think that would be quite tidy. Let's just offer it up against the bike. Let's go in and just open it, offer it up. Yeah, I think that'd be a quite a good size actually. And here we have all the extra bits and pieces. So what have we got here? This is the power. Um, fuse the box in there. And we have to have a constant power and switchable power by the looks of it. That's the yellow and the red wires. Um, from experience on installing stereos on cars, I think that's what that would be. Um, we have a camera. We have a second camera. So obviously this has got front and rear cameras. Then we have, um, that looks like a connection into the actual unit to take in the feeds from the cameras and the power. Uh, we have a mounting bracket. And we have a handlebar control unit. Now let's take all these things out so we can have a look at them properly. So I have this handlebar control unit here. So um, if we have a Bluetooth earpiece in our head um, helmet, that will Help, help us take calls. Now at the moment, I haven't got a Bluetooth earpiece in my helmet, but um, I may order one up just so we can try that out. So it makes sense. Um, and that's just the kit that mount it all together. I'll just come through, open these boxes so we can see them. That's the bracket. That looks quite substantial. I'm just gonna offer it up against the the bracket a minute, so we'll come back. Now I'm hoping that will mount like that. So I think that would be okay. Don't think we'd want it that way because that's gonna be up in the way. So we'll probably have it back like that and angle it so it doesn't interfere with the clocks. But I think that could be all right. So that's the handlebar bracket. And there's um, some Allen keys in there and an Allen bolt. And the very last thing in the bottom of the manual, in the bottom of the box, is a manual. Um, now let's see how much information is in well. So we've got this big thick manual, obviously multiple languages. Um, but when we come down to it, in English, there's, yeah, there's a bit of information. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to strip the bike down the, um, 
the seat's going to have to come off, the petrol tank's going to have to come off. Um, I'm not even going to bore you with that because that's uh, more Royal Enfield specific. Um, and if you want to see that, I suggest you go and look for a video on removing your tank and seat on the Royal Enfield. I am going to concentrate this video on the unit and wiring it into the electrical system. So we'll get, I'll get that all stripped down now and we'll come back when we're ready to start putting the wiring together. Almost looked like someone out of uh, Star Trek, didn't I? The next thing is, we've stripped the bike down. As you can see, I'm also going to do heat grips, but that's not really important. Obviously we got power from the battery, but what I've got to try and find is where we can get a ignition switched live. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of research on that and every bike is going to be different because the last thing we want is it to be on permanently, isn't it? Okay, after uh, doing a little bit of research, on this particular model, now I, I can't say for other models, I really don't know, but when you switch on the ignition, the lights come on. There isn't any option to switch the lights on or off. So, in theory, there is a switch live going to the tail light. Well, not in theory, there is a switch live going to the tail light. So now I need to find out which wire is actually the tail light wire. Then I can tap off that one and bring that back into the circuit and that means the unit will be switched live. Um, also, I've got a couple of few other fuses, this is um, something that's been done prior, going in here. And um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little loom to come off that one so we can have three connections that I'll need and plug in so we're not going directly into the battery every time so that's I'm gonna make up a little loom as well while we're doing it now that's something you don't need to do uh, but I am gonna do it um, and I think that will make everything a little bit easier for me okay so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have just this little loom it's, it's really simple we're just gonna have that one will connect to the battery then we'll have little sockets on each end and then we'll plug in at the other end from the accessories. Now the fuse for each accessory will start after that point. So what I'm going to do here, as you can see, I've just tie wrapped them together a minute so they're in a nice square and I'm going to put some solder on that just so they're all good. And then I'm going to put this on. We'll put heat shrink over the top of it. And then that will be our, our little extension loom, basically extending from the battery just make things a little bit easier from rather than un untapping from the, cause it, at the battery. Every time you want to do something, you can see there, you've got to unscrew the battery terminal, which I don't think is a very good idea. So failing having anything else to plug into, other bikes might have something different, I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going with what I've got to use here. So once we've done that, we'll have a little loom and we'll reconnect all these as well. Um, and I think we'll probably create a little earth loom as well. Just makes sense. Just make everything a lot easier. Uh, then we will lay everything out and work out where we're going to put cameras and all the rest of things. So there we have it. That's a little loom. I mean, it's nothing special, is it? But that's going to enable me to plug in to the battery and then just have the terminals down here. And that will mean I can plug in and unplug and plug in very, very simply, rather than having, you know, to go in there and unscrew the battery terminal all the time, which is ridiculous in my opinion. Anyway, that's nothing to do with the stereo install, but it is to do with the stereo install, stereo install, head unit install, information screen install. Got to think what it's called really, am I? Anyway, I'm going to now move on and I'm going to do the Earth one and then we'll, once I've done that, we'll start looking at laying out the wires. Turn me Star Trek head off. Right, um, I've had a bit of a change of heart here. Um, I've decided that um, I want all the live points switchable. So nothing will come live until the ignition's on. So I'm going to put a re relay in it as well. So I've got a basic four pin relay. And the lives are going to come off pin 87. I'll show you the diagram and the diagram will come up here now. So you can see the basic 
diagram of how to do it. It's quite simple. And the idea is all the relay will switch on the power when the power comes on. Um, I've made this little loom, like I was saying, that's for the earth. And I've got to just make a few of the wires up now just to make it all work. But we'll do that and I think it's going to be a much neater installation. I'll be much happier with it personally and it's not too difficult to do really so it's up to you but um, I think it all in all it will make for a far better install. Right now I'm going to try and find the switchable supply from the rear light. Now there's only three wires I'm going to use a multimeter. You can see the multimeter down there. Let's see if I can just move that so you can actually see it as I'm using it. That's better, isn't it? So we got it on 20 volts DC. Now what we're going to do, now if I go through them at the moment, there shouldn't be any change. And there isn't. So now I'm going to switch on the ignition on the bike and one of these will have, have power for the tail light and there you are so there should there is a 12 volt just hold the connections and you can see it obviously a battery is like slightly more than 12 volts but there is your supply so if you've got a Royal Enfield Himalayan it's the yellow lead on the tail light but if you've got another bike you're gonna to have to check I'm afraid so we know what it is so we're gonna take a tap off that now so we'll do that and then we'll come back again okay I've run all the wire in and you um, got a major piece here that takes the power of the cameras and the control. So you've got a control here. I've not done anything with it yet, but that's going to be mounted on the middle of the handlebars, mainly because I've got a heated grip that are going to go there. Um, the unit is in place and the cameras are located. Now this camera I think I'm going to mount on the mudguard there so he looks back like that so he's looking straight back if you can see that so that looks straight back bit of cable in the tidy up yet obviously and the front camera I think I'm going to mount like that so it'll be on the side um, unfortunately I don't think there's anywhere better to put it I've looked at underneath the headlight, but I don't really want to drill into the headlight itself. Um, so I'm going to opt for that side, being the side that you'd have traffic coming towards you as well. So I think that's probably the better side to be. I don't know. It's hard to decide, but I think that's what I'm going to go for. Now, powering up the van, the, powering up the, van, powering up the bike. I'll switch them on. I have powered him up once so far and this is uh, there you are and then you've got your car play and it starts recording straight away if we come down here um, you can see it's looking behind you and I'm not quite sure So by sliding it different ways, you can have different views. So that's, both of them are behind, and that one's in front. So um, it's all recording. We'll test that out properly once we've mounted it all. But that's where we are at the moment. So um, I'm going to power him off. Like I said, I used a relay to power him and take power to other things as well. I'm about to put some heated grips on as well. So I'm gonna do that while the bikes are stripped. And we'll come back to the video once I've um, tidied all the wiring up so you can see the wiring and then we'll go from there. But it's been relatively simple. 
However, I've spent probably four hours doing it now. So you, um, it's not a quick fix because you, like a car, you could just plug it, plug it into a cigarette loader and stick a camera on the dash. You know, with some of these um, new units. With a bike, it's got to be fought out a bit more because it's got to be all watertight. And you can't have cables just flapping around anywhere, can you? So that's why it's taking a little bit longer. So be prepared to take a little bit of time. We're going to get it all back together and then we'll see what it works like. And then we'll take it out for a proper test drive later on in the week and report back on how good it is. And that'll be the sort of video. But so far, everything is good. The only thing on that there is permanent. It's, it, you can't just quick, re quickly remove it. Um, and that might be a target for thieves when your bike's parked up. I don't know. They might think it's a phone. It does look like a phone, doesn't it? So um, that could be the only thing. That's what it looks like from in front. Just have to wait and see how we get on with that. But um, that's my only concern that it is not quick release. I think um, maybe if that bracket there had some sort of clamping mechanism so you could just clamp on and clamp off, it'd probably be better. But that's the only negative I've found so far. So, you know, it, it feels like a nice sturdy unit. It feels as good as a phone. So I'm going to carry on and put the heated grips on now and then I'll come back to you when I've got the cabling all tidied. Well, here we are, and uh, what we've done now is we've actually managed to wire everything in, so it's all wired, and I've put the heat grips on as well. But that's that's another thing. I, I, this video wasn't about the heat grips, um, so it's all controlled by a relay now. So when I switch on the ignition, you can see it comes on, and everything is controlled through the relay. And it even goes to my phone. So if I go into CarPlay, my phone is here somewhere. And there you are. So it automatically finds my phone. And we've got satellite, satellite, and we've got sat nav as well. So, so far, so good. It looks quite good, doesn't it? I'm just going to put everything back together now on the bike, put the tank back on. and. Okay, the bike is back together. Got the camera there, but that's there. Um, obviously, the whole bike's back together, and that's looking quite good, isn't it? I'm quite impressed with the look. However, um, I haven't read any instructions yet, and the next thing. That needs to be sorted out. I'm just going to show you. Like unit boot up. When we go into the cameras, you'll notice that are an angle. Right, that's my phone just loading. Car plays loads really well. Um, so if I come down on the controls here, the top one is a camera, and you can see the images are at a slant. Now that could be set up. I can't find anything yet, but um, that's not to say that it's not there. So that's the next thing I'm going to try and find out. But um, you see, you've got little controls here. So that takes you home. And if I just come back a bit so you can see me doing it. So that's the home button. That takes a picture. And that's a camera. Or whatever. And obviously, there's CarPlay. And there we are with ways installed as well so um and if as you could play your music as well so um we'll give it a go and the next thing what we're going to do is um we're going to take it for a proper run um we've got and we're, like i said earlier on we're going down to we're going camping at the weekend and we're going to see some friends so i'll ride the bike down there and follow v and uh, we'll try it out and see what it's like. And I'll try and get a um, Bluetooth earpiece ordered for the helmet, for my helmet. And 
we'll see how it works with that as well what, what the um, navigation's like music and whether it's really good or really poor anyway that's where we're going to leave it at the moment um i'm quite happy oh i didn't show the camera at the front did i um there's a the camera at the front just turn the ignition off there so you can see there's a the camera at the front looks quite neat and tidy doesn't it? the only thing i don't like is a screws i'm gonna see if i can't find something a little bit better that looks very cheap very cheap indeed um, maybe an allen screw and a nut would look a lot better they've used allen screws everywhere else and then they've not used allen screws there uh, quite disappointing really the majority of it i gotta say it's looking really really good yeah like i say so far so good it's gone pretty well um it's it's about eight o'clock in the evening now so it's taking me quite a while to do it but like i said with a bike you've got to do it properly you can't just you know plug it into the cigarette lighter and, and it all works so i've had to go and put some wiring in but i've also done heated grips today as well so that has taken up time as well when i initially installed this unit i couldn't work out quite how to make the camera rotate and literally undo this bracket and you can rotate the camera now i'm gonna change that screw with an allen screw as well while we're at it and we'll get it all nicely done i think it'll just be an easier way to adjust it so i've adjusted them now and i've added as you can see there i've put on screws in there and bolts and screws whichever you want to call them and i've adjusted the cameras they spin round didn't realize at the time i thought they were fixed in the brackets but um so there you can see far better view so i'm quite happy with that now I took a bike out for a quick ride just now because I had to go for an MLT and the only other thing I can say is that screen I just need to adjust it very slightly so it looks a little bit further up to me um, it's funny when you're stood beside a bike and adjusting things you don't adjust it for when you're sat on them you should really sit on the bike shouldn't you anyway I'll do that so like I said, I've taken it for a little test drive. It's great seeing sat nav on your bike, um, but we'll take it for a proper test drive later on in the week. Right, okay, um, we've gone for the first proper ride with the unit on the bike. I was recording with my Insta360 on the way down, um, so you'll see the problems. Now, that screen doesn't work when you've um, got gloves on. There's no way I can get it to work. And Siri didn't want to work through the headset in my helmet, so that's probably more down to the setup of my helmet. So we'll try and sort that out before we ride back. Apart from that, the information in front of you is great. I still think it looks a great piece of kit, really. It's, it looks substantial. Uh, what it'd be like when it's been in some weather, I don't know, but um, it looks really good. Well, here I am, I'm back in the garage and we've had the unit on the bike now for at least about a week, maybe a little bit longer. And we've had plenty of time to play around with it and really get to grips with it. Now, as a unit, I think it is really brilliant. I love the way the information is presented to you and it's really easy to see your um, navigation coming up, just like you would do in a car. Um, I really like that. Um, I put a Bluetooth headset on my crash helmet 
The sound came through perfectly. There was no issues with the sound coming through. However, I think my crash helmet created too much wind noise to enable Siri to be able to hear what I was actually saying. So I wasn't able to have voice commands work unless I was stopped at a junction or yeah, unless I was stopped and there was no wind noise. That's the only way it worked. However, maybe uh, spending more money on a more expensive uh, unit would be better. Um, I don't know, but that's not part of the unit. So I, I'm not too worried about testing that. So all in all, I thought it was very, very good. The manual controls on the on the actual handlebars are brilliant. You got you know you can switch it over to front and rear cameras. Well, you can you can select cameras, and then you can actually select whether you want front or rear cameras or both. I found at times it was great to select the rear camera, and you could use it as a rear view mirror. Um, not that it's a substitute for your rear view mirror, but it was handy just to see when you're in traffic. See just quite how close people, things were behind you. The middle button enables you to take photographs. Um, I suppose if you're riding along and you see something really nice you want to take a photograph of, it's just easy to just press that button and take a photograph. I'll show you some shots. I took a couple of photographs, nothing special, but I took a couple of photographs along the way so you can see it. The footage, um, I'm going to show you some footage while I'm talking about this as well. The front and rear cameras are recording all the time you're, you're riding, so you can see the footage at the front and, and at the rear. And I've gone in, there's a 64 gig card that comes with it, and there is pretty much um, all of my two and a half hour ride from the last two days. All the footage is there, so you could go in afterwards using the camera app which you have to download. You go into the Wi-Fi video section on the head unit. Head unit? I want to call it a head unit. It's an information unit. I don't really know what you call it. You call it a head unit in a car, wouldn't you? Would we call it a head unit on a bike? I don't know. Tell me what you would call it. Information unit, head unit, anyway. But you go into the Wi-Fi app on the actual unit. It will give you a QR code. You download the app to your phone. Then you connect to its Wi-Fi and then you can download the um, footage to your your phone and you can share it or you can do whatever you need to do with it. Um, so what do I think? Would I buy one? Yeah, I like it. I really do like it. There's one issue that I've had um, is with my gloves and it turned out it's the lever on my gloves was, um, I don't know, too, um, shiny maybe maybe the lever is too shiny but the screen wouldn't work however my friend he had a different type of lever gloves they were um, a softer touching type of uh, lever glove and this uh, the screen worked perfectly for him so that is more of an issue with my gloves rather than it was with the actual unit itself um so yes i would buy one um i love the way it works i love the um the way it's been, I've wired it up and everything, so it comes on instantly with the ignition. I think it's absolutely brilliant. The one thing that concerns me though, I said it before earlier in the video, is the unit is not easily detachable. You know, when you're parked up, it does look like you've got a mobile phone hanging from your adventure bar on the bike, or where you know, you got a mobile phone connected to the bike. I think that could attract someone trying to steal it and end up damaging your bike maybe and damaging more so a quick release um, bracket would be a better idea i personally think now that's just my thoughts um the other things um the the cameras is not documented or i can find it in the documentation anyway that you have to physically rotate the cameras in the brackets because it doesn't look initially like the cameras rotate in the brackets but they do and as you saw in the video i changed it to allen screws and it just makes it that little bit easier to adjust because i found the phillips screws were really really difficult to try and adjust a little tiny bit so that's something i would change so that's a really easy fix for lamp tool to change and just have that little uh, fix on it. The quick release bracket, I think would be an amazing addition. I really do. I think um, a lot of people would prefer that. I'm just trying to think of anything else I could improve. I don't think there is. I really don't think there is. I think the unit looks great. I've not used it in the wet, although today it's absolutely hammering down, but I don't really want to go out and use 
in the rain myself and get soaking wet. So um, I'm not going to use it in the rain, but um, we're assured it's IP67 uh, waterproof. And um, if you get one, you can try it out yourself. Now they've said, I said it earlier in the video, but I'll say it again. They've said anybody who wants to buy one, um, contact them on their Facebook page um, or buy via their Facebook page and the link I'm going to put down below. Mention the channel and they will be given a discount of 50% to random people. So if you want one, there's a good chance you could get one for half price. I think the retail price is about $220, that's American dollars, um, which I think would probably be work out to close to about £200 currently. Um, which, you know, it's not cheap, but it's on a bike and it's got to be good, isn't it? You don't want any rubbish on your bike. So I think in that respect, it's not a bad thing to do. Anyway, so that is my thoughts on this unit. Would I buy one? Yeah, I think I would. I really like it. It'd be nice if they could do one with a different type of fixing that would fit more of a sports bike. Now, if I just turn the camera around a minute, I've got um, my other bike here as well. So you can see on the adventure bike, it sits nicely on that, on that bracket. But if you're gonna come into a, a sports bike and it's a totally different look, where are you gonna put it? Because if you mount it anywhere here, so if you mount it anywhere here, you're gonna block your clocks. Um, so that could be an issue. Um, I'm not sure, I don't know if you could fit one on one of these bikes, but you could still have the cameras and you could uh, maybe have that unit um, a bit more concealed. Um, so it's working, but it's not visible. But then is there any point? You might as well just buy cameras. So that brings us to the end of the video. Um, I hope I've been thorough and given you a proper honest review of this and help you make your own decision. And if you've really liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more footage like this, more videos on gadgets for vehicles, because I'm going to say vehicles because I've got, I normally do cars and vans rather than bikes, but I do have a couple of bikes here. I'll just show you. We got my SV650, which is about to start a restoration that will be at some point. I got the Royal Enfield Himalayan, which is what I did all the testing on. And um, that one is currently up for sale. So if you're looking for Royal Enfield Himalayan, that is actually up for sale. And I'm just going to show you down here. This is the new bike. Now this is going to be my new main bike. That's a Triumph 900 Scrambler. So if you want to see more footage on vans, traveling, bikes maybe even, I'll hopefully do a bit more on bikes in the, in the coming future. I haven't done much yet. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and hopefully we'll see you in the next video guys. So look after yourself and we'll see you very soon. Bye.